Okay, my name is Leslie Price. Um, I grew up in New York. I went to high school in New York. I went to an art high school, art and design. From there, with the encouragement of my friends, I applied to Pratt Institute and was accepted. And then, uh, after graduating from Pratt, I moved to the Bay Area um, and went to Mills College, the graduate program. After there, uh, I was looking for jobs, got a part-time job teaching at Laney College, Contra Costa, and Alameda, all part-time work. And a friend, Samela Lewis, encouraged me to go to an interview um, for a job at Humboldt State, um, which I did. I was hired, and I'm still here after 30 plus years. While at Pratt, I met a teacher, his name was uh, James Gahagan, and Gahagan kind of changed my life. I was enamored with art. I initially thought I was going to be an uh, architectural student. But after meeting Gahagan, he really opened my eyes to painting. And painting was about making imagery, but it was also this kind of uh, inner exploration, as well as making something that existed in the physical world. When I came to California, my world of painting from New York was kind of thrown upside down, just because of the aesthetics of the Bay Area, which was so different from New York. Uh, my paintings changed, I kept experimenting, trying new things, and trying to figure out, you know, what really resonated for me. Since I lived here, what started resonating, which I hadn't paid attention to that much in New York, was nature. And the more I hiked and went to the rivers, um, you know, took walks, backpacked in the mountains, the more I found that that is what, what was most meaningful. Concurrently, um, I started meditating. And I would say those are the two things that have influenced me. Lately, I've been thinking about uh, cultures and how cultures have used nature in their artwork, more traditional cultures. Um, but there's still like this basis of nature. I would say that although I am not copying nature, I certainly use it for inspiration. Um, you know, I'm in it so much that it's, it's you know, fairly internalized. I notice that when we travel, besides going to great restaurants and visiting family, I always want to walk by the ocean and I want to go into the woods. So I guess you would say nature is it for me. Um, painting. I used to work in oil paints, now I work with acrylics. Um, the reason for changing was more health related. I found that when I used oil paints and the toxins, well, they weren't really toxins, but the, the solvents would cause me to have rashes from diluting the paint. So I switched to oils, I mean, excuse me, I switched to acrylics. At the same time, I had been doing some watercolors, so it seemed like acrylics, in my opinion, are basically transparent. Uh, their nature is transparent versus opaque. And so I use the, the acrylics in a transparent way to build up layers. The shapes are, you know, they're, in some ways the shapes are influenced by nature, but they're not copied from nature. Um, I do a series of work based on an initial idea, and then I'll do a bunch of paintings uh, to to see how much I can squeeze that idea out. Here comes the bright light. Um, thinking about my work, you know, in my travels, I've always noticed 
that nature in, in this larger sense has been what's defined the culture. Of course the culture makes up its own rules and music and all of that, but it, it seems like at the bottom, you know, from our food, for basic enjoyment, for tranquility, um, you know, nature is pretty powerful. And also seeing when I grew up as a kid, noticing how weeds would push up through the cracks of the cement in New York, it left an indelible mark in, for me. And um, so that's the story of you know my rationale for using nature. I must. Have, you know, state again that I do do drawings that are, you know, representational of plants. I've done landscape paintings. I've done figurative paintings. I've done a lot of different things. Uh, but I find that working in the manner of abstraction allows me a lot more freedom. I'm more interested in the feel than the story. Although I may have a particular notion, it's really about the painting and how the painting resonates. Either it does or it doesn't. Um, there's no narrative, there's no direct relationship to anything outside of the painting. The painting has a life of its own. Of course, I'm a smart guy and I try to work with composition. And uh, placement, um, but I remember a friend saying that I'm the first viewer, so it, it definitely has to resonate with me first, and hopefully it resonates with the viewer, um, but that part I really don't have any control over. Um, the thing about nature in my walks in the woods or even where I look, I live. So I find that my experience of walking in nature is that it's really dynamic, yet it's also very tranquil. Um, and that element I try to get into the work, you know, a, a dynamic uh, element, but quiet, in a way, perhaps meditative. I think all paintings have that quality. Um, my colors, um, they're the colors I'm drawn to, but they don't have any particular symbolic value. Um, you know, paintings in a way are, you know, it's, it's not that earth shattering. It doesn't cure anything, it's not going to stop a war, but I think it provides something, you know, like in an ideal world, if there weren't wars and people were living in a, a good place, they would still want to enjoy something of beauty. And rather it's my paintings or any paintings, but I think that's a natural part of, of just life. So I think there is a value to the work to my work, um, not just my work, but other paintings. But the value isn't a value like buying a new car. It has a value that could be meaningful when people look at them. Uh, they're certainly meaningful to me. I've been painting for as long as I can remember. And I remember an artist, uh, Morris Graves, who lived in the area before he passed away, he used to say that artists never retired. Um, they just keep going until they can't anymore, unless their health affects them. But, you know, I'm so into this uh, making work. I just enjoy the process of losing myself and falling into the work and seeing where the work takes me. Um, the only performance involved is the performance for me. I'm not looking over my shoulder, thinking about how other people are going to look at it.
but I, I do hope, you know, that painting, like all arts, the audience completes the process, the viewer completes the process. Um, I paint mostly in silence if I have difficult parts. I have eclectic taste as far as music. Uh, just recently I've been, I was just in New York, so I'm listening to a lot of gospel music. But I also listen to classical music. I listen to salsa, you know, whatever, whatever grabs my attention. Um, but I try not to, when I'm making crucial decisions about the work, I try not to listen to music because I want the work to be more directed from, you know, whatever sensibility is mine and not the, the music that I'm listen, listening to. But at the same time, you know, if you think about it, you know, I am a product of all the things I listen to and talk people I talk to and things I read, so I'm not like an island unto myself. I understand that. But I do try to be as quiet as possible uh, in making the work. Um, that's all. I can't think of anything else. Nice. Well, that's pretty... Uh...